Hello all. Good morning, good evening or good afternoon. Based on wherever you are. Thank you for all your love and support to the API series. And this is a pretty old request. Sorry for the delay on this. But we'll be doing multiple videos in this series. And in this, what we'll try to understand is how you consume an external API in Business Central. I'll try to cover all the scenarios without authentication, basic authentication if possible, and then OAuth authentication. But in this, we are not talking about APIs in Business Central. We might be, but we'll be talking about external system who are exposing their data as APIs and then consuming them inside Business Central. So thanks to everyone who commented that they want a series like this. So let's get into it. But before we get into it, a humble request to subscribe to the channel and keep engaged because there will be at least four or five videos coming into this series, hopefully. And I don't want you to kind of delay on this because as it is fresh in my memory, I'll be able to answer questions in a better way. So if you have questions, drop them into the comments and let's get started. Okay. So let's understand what we are going to do. So I was looking for a dummy sample REST API. And there's this website called dummy REST API example, which exposes the employee entity where you can do get, you can, you can post, where you can put, and where you can delete. We'll try doing everything. And now when you go into this, you get a detail section where you can see what this method will return and when you call it, right? Now this, in this example, there is no authentication. You just call this endpoint and you'll get the response out of it. So this is without any authentication, which is this. So if we are able to call this API endpoint, in response of the get call, we'll get all these employees in this format. So let's try to do this. So to save time, because I understand if you are looking at this video, you surely have known how to create a table, a page and all. I've created a table which have all the fields that this API endpoint need, which is, uh, let's have a look. ID, employee name, employee salary, employee age, and the profile image is blank, but if it is there, you can utilize it. Now it is not mandatory to have the same name, but I was a little bit lazy, so I just copied the same name. You can have different names, that doesn't make any difference, right? I'm utilizing ID as my primary key, and then these fields or this data will try to fetch. Uh, to support this, what I've also done is create a list page where uh, all these records will be visible and then an associated card page. Now, right now, what you're trying to do in this first video is trying to get the records that are in that API endpoint. So we'll be doing a get call to that API. For that, I have already created an action which is empty at this moment to get records, a simple action where we are doing, going to do the call to see how you actually get records. And because we'll be doing a lot of examples on this one uh, with different type of authentication and all, I would rather create a new code unit for it. So let's do a code unit and we will call it as, uh, let's say SDH, this is my prefix, not registered, but my prefix. Um, API management. You can name it anything. It's better to keep it separate. I, I feel that way, right? Let's do finish. Now this is my code unit. So I'll call this code unit in this page. So let's create a variable here, API management, SDH API management. Now we'll need a function. So let's do it here and say, API management dot get records. Okay. Now let's create this function on that code unit, which is here, get records. Okay, so you're good here. Let me zoom this in if that helps. Okay. Okay. I'll just change it and make it public. 
so that it can be exposed from there and now i'm going to let's try to see what we need to do to bring data from there to make a call to an api endpoint we have some pre-built uh data types that are available and that all starts with making a request to an endpoint which happens using the HTTP client so let's create a variable and call it as a client I'll call it as HTTP client now this data type uh, allows us to interact with an API endpoint where I can just do a client and then let's see what methods are available there's an add certificate that's a clear default request header we'll see whatever is needed get post put send base address timeout and other things here but there's one which is called as send now if we come down to the send let's see the documentation it says you can send a request to an asynchronous operation with two things one is the request and the other is passed as reference called response and if the request is successful you will get a response for sure but you will also get a boolean in return if the response is successful so if you try to do a send what we need is we need a http request and a response so let's just copy this and create these two as variables here HTTP request and HTTP response messages now somehow I need to define the uh, request which is let's make it a small case I like it that way and then let's also try to get the response out of it so let's make the response also a little bit smaller so I'll do a here request and response now I need to define my request that I'm going to make to that website and then the response will hold the response that is coming in so let's start making that okay so the first thing first is we need to define what kind of HTTP request it is because there can be different kind of HTTP requests as we saw in the website which is uh, here so if you look at it there are different kind of HTTP methods that are available and to support this there is a data type that is again available in business central which is called as HTTP request and here I can do a HTTP request uh, okay oh sorry this is an enum that's available called HTTP method so this is my request type now when you look at this particular data type called HTTP method or that enum what you'll notice that it allows you to do uh, let's see delete get patch post and put so you have all the options available so based on whatever you're doing you can define this and then utilize that so we are going to utilize this because right now we are going to make a get call so we'll say HTTP request type is equals to get I'll have to do it before this but let's just place this that there okay here so first I'll set it's very clear that I'm going to make a get request and now because this is needed to build the request so now I'm going to set the request now the request is actually we may not need this in this scenario so let's remove it for a while now I'm getting a little bit confused here on the request there should be some options available so let's see request dot method 
and then there are different methods one of them is get for sure so you can also define it like this so i'm deciding the request variable that i'm going to use and then once this is set that it is a get then i need to call it endpoint so there should be a request dot set uh, request URI which gives which allows you to give a endpoint to it so I can actually place an endpoint from this website which is this the get one so let me just copy this and paste it here oh okay. so I'm in the request I'm saying that the request need to be made to this website and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do a get hopefully all clear on this till this point now when i do a request the response should have it the response that i needed right now let's test it out and let's see what comes up in the response so i can then do that if the client is successful if the client call is made because it is returning me a boolean i can then say then and then based on that i can also see is there anything on the response the response have content response have headers status code is success which tells me is the request that was made is successful or not reason phrase if there is an error message so i should always start by making sure that there is a response okay so if the response is success whatever the success code is if that returns as true then i would like to see the content of it okay no message or let's put a message okay message and then here i'll put my percentage one and let's try to fetch whatever is in the response http or oh, sorry response dot content yeah let's just do a pretty, pretty straightforward content now this should generate the content but what happens if it is a failure and that can happen when you are making a call right so if there is an error then what i would like to do is generate an error message and in the error message i would like to see what is the reason for the error so if everything goes well this should show me the list of all these records which are available on this website hopefully so let's publish this let's see our base basic api call without any uh, authentication mechanism how it works and does it even response me the output that i was expecting from this one okay so this is being published let's go into our page the page is called demos i guess let's see uh yeah demos so let's do a demos here okay let's try to do a get record now whenever you call an external system from business central you get this message that this extension is trying to make an external request to an external system do as a user you want to allow this request you can do always allow allow once block always and block once right this is just to verify that because you are going outside business central the system is giving you that message that you are actually going out of the system so let's do allow once let's click ok and it said star and that was a message that was not a error that was actually a message which means that my code was successfully called and is trying to return me something but that is not content now that's the reason uh because it kind of responds you in a way that you need to start kind of understanding it so what you need to do once you get the response from an api is you need to start reading it that this is what it is all about 
so let's wait for it and see how you, we kind of uh, deprecate or kind of open up this message which is here so if you see further on it after the content you can actually put a dot and see what else is available you can clear the content which has generated by response you can get the header you can check is it a secret content and then you can also do a read as so you can actually read the response and then there are multiple overload to this read as so let's check what those are the first one is to read it on a secret text the second is to read it on a text and third is read it into a stream so we have different ways of how you want to read the data that is being responded from the api call so i'll use the output string text to see what happens okay so let me create this variable here output text and then in this i'll just do a uh, response dot content dot read as and then i'll pass this and i'll append a begin here and the end will come here okay and then i'll see what is the content of out of string into a message okay looks good i hope so hopefully we'll be able to see the response out of this call let me make it here okay let's publish this and let's see it so now once it gets published we'll get back to the demos page and see what kind of responses we are getting now once you get the response then it's all about how you effectively read that response and utilize it into your system so if i go into demo and i try doing get records allow once okay and you see the same message that you see there in here the first uh, employee is tiger nixon so if you look at it the first one is tiger nixon so it actually returned you the value that is returned from that api endpoint that you're utilizing so from a very basic perspective where there is no authentication where you just need to call an api endpoint and get the response this is the code that you need there are pre-built http data types which help you to do that and uh, then you can surely understand what the response is and then translate it into a way that makes sense to you our end goal into the next part of this video would be to kind of derive that message or the response that is coming out of it and then utilize it to store those records into my business center table that will complete the get part of it then we'll try other uh, options or http methods which are available and once that is over we'll see how you can do it on an authentication basis and then for surely we'll try how to do it on an oauth basis that is a business centric scenario now what is the next action that i want from you guys is to make sure that if you have any questions in today's video please add it into the comments if there is a scenario that i haven't said that we'll cover into this add it into the comment section i would like to cover every possible scenario that you you, you may need in your business processes and just trying to make the series as useful as it can be for you so you know the drill hit the like button if you like the content share this video with someone who is struggling with making api connections and we'll talk about it going forward in this series and if you haven't then please do subscribe to this channel uh till then keep learning and keep sharing i'll see you sooner than later on the next video in this series till then have a nice day